Okay. We are continuing with chapter 33, verse 11, where Yaakov says to Esav, Take my blessings or my offerings, ironically, he says, Take my blessing. But the, the Yaakov had taken the blessing. He says, Except Birchasi doesn't mean a bracha here, it means like the, the gifts that I brought to you. Because God has been gracious to me. He says, God has been gracious to me because I have everything. And he entreated upon him and he took it. Let's see what Rashi says. Birchati, Rashi translates it as Minchanti, my offering. This offering, which comes from, from seeing another from time to time. This comes only for greetings. The And every blessing which comes when you see somebody, anytime the word bracha comes, like by Barak Yaakov as Paro or a Soli to Bracha de San Cherev, Chayla Sholo Shalom of Racho, or the Toei Mela Hamas, by the Toei, the King of Hamas, Kuam Rasham Birka Shalom Hain. They don't mean a blessing, they mean a blessing of a greeting, a blessing of peace. Shekorin Balaz Saluder, in French it's Saluder. Avzu Birchatimun Salud. It's like to greet. So this is a birkati is my greeting. Yes, Jerry, you're raising your hand. Uh, yes, uh, I thought yesterday we were going to explore the human uh, aspect of God when Yaakov says, I saw God, uh, and the translation is angels, but the, but the shot was very clear. It was God. So I thought we were going to look at the Forshim to explore uh, that explanation, if there's any explanation for it. I haven't got, I haven't had, I'm sorry, I apologize. I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So maybe uh, I'll look into that uh, to try to find that, but I didn't get a chance to look at that. So I, I'd like to now focus on the Rashi because I didn't do the study of this. Apologies. Okay. All right, thank you for your patience with me. So the next verse, stay, uh, so, so Asher Huvatlach, which was brought to you, well, she says, Lo taracht taba. You did not trouble over it. Vani agati bagia. But I worked hard for it to arrive. Until it arrived at your hand. Hanani, that God was gracious to me. Rashi, okay, we'll skip this, Rashi. It's a... Uh, it's, it's grammatical. And then Yeshli call. Yaakov says, I have everything. Esav had said Yeshli Rav. Yaakov says Yeshli call. So what does this mean? Kol si pukai. I have everything that I need. Was the Esav diber Boashon gaiva. Esav spoke arrogantly. Yeshli Rav. I have so much. Yoser v'yoser mikdei tzarki. He goes, I have much more than I need of. He's like, he said, basically, I have, I have so much. Yaakov said, I have enough. That's a line from The Great Gatsby, in case anybody's uh, not, not, not noticing it. He says, I have something he doesn't have. He says, what? Enough. Remember that? Yeah. Okay. Because so, he has what he needs and what, not what he wants. That's not the first time you've quoted The Great Gatsby uh, in the last two weeks. That's pretty good because I never actually read it. <laughs> so now the next verse states, he said, let us travel and we will go and I will proceed alongside you. Basically, who said here? It presumes to be Esav is probably speaking. Esav says, let us travel together. And Yaakov's going to respond. So Rashi says, Nisa, let's travel. So Rashi is telling us, that this is a form like Kamo Shema'a and Silacha. It's a form. Shehu Kamo Shehu Kamo Shema Silach, meaning to say that that's the form here. Okay. And the Targum Shalunkola says, Tol Unahach, travel on and let us go. Esav Amar Yaakov Nasamikan Venelech, travel on from here and let us go. So that's how Yaakov, Rashi tells us that this is Esav speaking to Yaakov. 
Nisa Mikan. Let us travel on from here. That's how he says it. Nisa. Vayomer Elav and Yaakov says to him, Adoni Yodea. He also compares. That's the second Rashi. Right. He says, I, I'm equal to you. Vayomer Elav. So it says, Ve'alchol and I will proceed alongside you. Right, skip that. Bishavelach, in line with you. Tova zu eselach. Esav says to Yaakov, I'll do this favor. Shariach yimei malachti, I'll go slower. Alechet la'at. I'll go slower. I'll travel with you. I'll run a I'll run a ten minute mile just so you can keep up with me. So when he says I'll travel negdecha means I'll travel at your pace. Asa was being was offering that, and Yaakov said Yaakov doesn't want any part of this. He says, my master knows, and we know actually from the Midrash, the Midrash says, because Yaakov called Asa, my master, eight times, that's why there were eight kings of Edom. Hold on. So, so he says, my master knows that the children are rakim, the children are tender. And the sheep and the cattle are upon me. We'll see what that means. Well, she'll tell us. And if they drive them hard, then one day, then all the sheep will die. What's his response? His response, Ra, she says, the sheep and the cattle, he says, the sheep and the cattle, which are alot. Alot means nursing. Mutalot alai, it's my job in to drive them slowly. Alot, Rashi says, means migadrot olayhen, they're raising their young. Rashon olel viyonik, child and infant, ul yamim. Shtei parot alot, in French it's infants. Infants. Mother of a newborn, like infant. In the in the English, it only refers to a uh, offspring, but in French, it can refer to the mother giving birth as well, not just to the child being born. Very interesting. And they will drive them one day. And if they will drive them hard even for one day, then by running with them, then they're going to die. So this is very interesting because why? what's Yaakov's argument? I can't drive. Asim says, I'll go slowly. And Yaakov says, yeah, but you might not go slowly. You might drive them and then they'll all die. So Asim must not have known anything about sheep. He was a hunter. Let my Lord pass before me. Oh, Steve, we're in right. chapter uh, 33, verse 14. He said, let my Lord... 34. No. Chapter 33, verse 14. Chapter 33, verse 14. Let my master pass before his servant. And I'll make my way slowly. According to the way, uh, according to the way in which they're walking, and according to the ways the children are walking, until I come to my Lord at Sayir. So Yaakov was saying, you go ahead of me and I'll catch up. By the way, that's, hold on one second. Go ahead of me. Don't slow yourself down. You go ahead like you usually go. Even if you get a little bit of a distance. I'll get there. She says, I'll go at my slow pace. With slowness, like Right, I'll go slowly. 
according to the needs of the way they're working, which is a palm lift, go slowly. I'll catch up. According to the way the children can walk, until I follow up to my to my Lord to say ira. Yaakov made the journey longer. Yaakov's never intended to go to Seir. Mount Seir, Har Seir. There's, I believe, this was in Edom. So Yaakov never intended to get there. He was going to go only until Sukkot. But Amarim Dato Asotli Rai says, if Asaph intends to do me harm, this is a security. Steve, this is a security trick. Asaph said, walk with me. And Yaakov says, I'll get to you. I'll catch up to you in Seir. He never intended to get to Seir. He intended to go to Sukkot. He said, oh, if he's going to wait for me, he's going to know I'm getting there. So this was his security trick, Steve. A mis- called misinformation. Imdato Asotli Ra. So he's going to wait for me. He's going to set a trap for me outside Seira. But he never go, went. When will Yaakov fulfill his promise? Because Yaakov's not going to lie. So when will Yaakov actually show up there? In the time of the Mashiach, as it states, They saw the, 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 the saviors will rise up on Haritzion to judge Mount Esav. So how is that a reference to him going to Seir? I guess Seir is is the, the mountain of Esav. Oh, so in, what he means is Moshiim Baharat at Hari Sav means that that those of us are those of us who are lucky enough to go to Mount Zion, we're going to go and march out to to Mount Esav and judge him there from Ovadia. And that's why it's our custom to read Ovadia for Vishla. So, ah, so that's the reason why we read Ovadia, because then we're really going to give it, we're going to really give it to Esav. We're going to meet Esav on Mount Seir and, punish, and really give him, give, you know, pay him back. Very nice, very nice explanation here. Now, big shkoyach to you, Rabbi Yosef. We didn't realize that that's why we're reading it, because that's the verse. Because the, the Spartan don't. <laughs> and you would have said that the Spartan read something else, and uh, you would have expected them to be more uh, militant, I guess. Hold on. The Ashkenazim read Ovadja, yeah. Yeah. Ovadja, the book of Ovadja. Who Moshe and Baratzi almost put it Harry Sav? But we're going to have to read that properly. Okay. My Yomer Midrash Agada Yesha Parsha Zurabim. There are many Agadic Midrashim. Very nice. My Yomer Esav, at Sigana Imcham and Amashariti. Esav says, Listen, let me assign to you some of the people who are with me. Ah, ha, ha, Steve, you like that? We're going to let our consultants go alongside you. Oh. You know that trick, right? Let us put some of our consultants, just let us get some advisors to advise you properly. Uh, so Yaakov says, listen, why? Well, I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy of that. Asa says, let me put some advisors amongst you. We can advise you on how to behave. And Yaakov says, listen, I didn't do anything to deserve such good treatment. You like that, Steve? Vayomer, what does he say? Rashi, Vayomer, what was that? Tasali tovazu shani tzaracha. Why would you do this favor for me, which I don't need? Em tzachem be'idei adoni. V'lo tashalim liyat tashum gemul. Let me, you don't have to pay me anything. He said, I, I, let me find favor in your eyes, and I don't want you to do anything for me. Hold on one second. I'm going to remind a person to join us. Hold on. Okay. So now the next verse states, Vayasha Vayoma who Asav with Darko Siran. Asav returned on that day towards Seir. Rashi says, this is a beautiful Rashi. 
Ace of Avado, Ace of goes back on his own, because now it says Ace of went back by himself. But Dawan Meos Isha, Huimo Nishmetumi, it's all a hard vehard. Ace was a loser. They saw Yaakov didn't want to go with him. So the 400 men who were with him, they slipped away one at a time. Where did God give them their reward? Be made of it. In the time of David, as the states came, Abrameos Ish, Nara Sherachvo Algmalim. And, but for David had 400 men who rode with him on the camels. But obviously. No, the English translates differently that uh, save for 400 young men of Amalekai. Of right, Amalek, so there were 400 Amalekites who, escaped. Who, were not, who were not killed. They were the ones who escaped. So those Amalekites who escaped were these men of Asaph. They must have stayed alive from the time of now. Until the battle of David, what is, how is that even possible? But I guess Google. it's it's a hint to the reward that they got. It's a hint to the reward that they got. Okay, next verse states: "V'Yakov Nasa, V'Yakov Nasa Sukosa, V'Yivon Obayis Umegnei Wasa Sukos Al King Karashem Amakom Sukos." Yaakov went to Sukot. This is the first place in the Torah where we have Sukkot. And he built a house there. And for his cattle, he made Sukkot. He built a house. He built a barn. Therefore, they called the place Sukkot. But this is the first time in the Torah we see somebody building a house. Up until now, we had tents. Yaakov Ishtam Yoshev Oalim. Here he built a house. Uh, she says, She stayed there 18 months. A winter, a summer, and a winter. A winter, a summer, a winter, and a summer. That's from the Gemara Megillah. Sukos is Kayetz, Bayes is Chorav, Sukos is Kayetz. That's the way we know it. Well, the sucker is what they would build in the fields. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Mr. Shackman has his hand up. Oh, yes, Jerry, yes. Cannot hear you, Jerry. Jerry? Okay. Um, the word Sukkot is defined here as a stall. Uh, in other words, um, not a tent, but a more permanent kind of uh, dwelling for the animals. Like a so shelter. I raised, so I raised the question in our in our festival of Sukkot. Why do we? Why the Torah says you shall live in a sukkah for eight or uh, seven seven days. Uh, the, the sukkah should be not a tent, uh, <coughs> but, ah, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <coughs> when, <coughs> when Bilam says, <coughs> your tents are wonderful. Uh, <coughs> the, uh, the, the text, seems to use the word sukkah and tent uh, simultaneously. And there is, I think, a difference between the two. That's a very good point. The, what's the difference between a sukkah and an ohel? That's a good point. Um, I, it's worthy of exploration. I'm not promising you I'm going to be the one to explore it, but it is definitely worthy of exploration. What's the difference between a sukkah and an ohel. I, maybe my sister's saying that maybe a sukkah is not transportable where an ohel is. But um, Mishkan is called a sukkah. Uh, uh, so Mishkan, I don't know. We yeah, want we'll, to we'll look at that. Let's just maybe Rabbi Yosef can take this research project on. But it's a good question, Jerry. I, I like that question. Let's see the next Rashi. Jacob came whole to the city of Shechem. Asher Be'aretz Canaan. That was in the land of Canaan. When he came back from Padan Aram. 
Vayichan es ir, and he camped before the city. Rashi says, Shalem. Rashi says, what does it mean he came Shalem? Shalem big gufo. He came, uh, he was complete with his body. Shenitrapa His His wound, he was healed from his wound. Shalem bimemono. He was intact in his money. Uh, he was intact with his money. He, was, he, he didn't lose anything. Miko Oso Daron from that whole from that whole um, gift which he had given to Asaf. So this is the idea that Rashi is telling us that everything that Yaakov gave to, gave to Asaf was miraculous. It wasn't really, he didn't really give him anything. He didn't give up any of his property. It just seemed like he was giving it. That's the key. And also it states, Shalem b'Torato. He was complete with his Torah. Shalosh shachach tamudo b'Beit Lavan. That while he was in the house of Lavan, he never forgot what he had learned from the yeshiva Shem ve'ever. So Yaakov came there whole, complete. And uh, yes, I see a question, Mr. Shekman. Yes, another uh, important question. If we are to believe Rashi that Yaakov was cured of his lameness, why do Jews today refuse to accept to eat the uh, the uh, the lower parts of the cow? Well, yeah, we don't eat the git anasha. It said earlier in Paraglam based Pasukul Gimel because he had been wounded. So therefore, it's to remember that Jacob struggled with the angel. It doesn't say that it, it, it says he was completed. He was healed. But we have to remember that moment where Yaakov struggled with the angel. And so therefore, for that reason, we don't eat the Gid Hanasha today. Okay. So thank even you. though he was healed. Sure. Good point. So Rashi says he came to the city of Shem. Fine. We'll skip that Rashi. Bebaomi Padanaram. When he came back from Padanaram, Ka'adama Omero Chavero. Like a person who says to his friend, arayot. He says, I've survived two lions. Some say, I, I survived the teeth of the lions. Uh, and he came home intact. He says, he became complete um, from Lavan and Esav who confronted him on the journey. So, because he, everyone knows he came from Padan Aram. So, so what is he telling us? He's telling us he survived them. And then Yaakov bought his portion of the field, which he had acquired from where he planted his tent here. If he had a house, why is he planting a tent? That's another point. From the hands of B'nai Chamor, the father of Miyad B'nai Chamor Avi Shechem, from the children of Chamor Shechem's father, for 100 kasita. Rashi says kasita is meya. It's a small coin. Amar Rabbi Akiva, Maya Kasita. This is what Rabbi Kiva says in Rosh Hashanah. They used to call a Maya Kasita or a Kasita Maya. Um, and Targum explains Kasita is Chorfan, which means Tovim, which means good. The best coins. To the last passage for today. And he established an altar there. Kale O K Israel, and he established an altar there, and he called it the God of the God of Israel. God is the God of Israel. Rashi says, Lo Shem is Beach Karoy O K Israel. Not that the altar is called the God of Israel. Al Shem Shaya Kodesh Baruch Hu Imo Veitzilo, because God was with him and saved him. He called he called the miracle Al Shem Anes. He called the miracle after God for having saved him. He wanted to remember, praise God with the with the calling out of the names, as if to say, 
as if to say, Misha who El, who the one who is God, who Hakadosh Baruch Hu, he is he is the Holy One. Who El Kim we Shmi Israel. He is a God for me whose name is Israel. So do we find by Moses by Krasimo Hashem Nisi. Moses called God, Hashem is my miracle. Not that the altar was called Hashem. Hashem is Hashem. Because of the miracle, he called the name of the altar after the miracle. In order to mention the praise of God. And the rabbis taught that God called Jacob God. God called Jacob God in the sense that he had made him master over the earth, that he called him like the Lord. And the words of the Torah, Raj, he says, are like a hammer that shatters a rock. This is a very well-known Rashi. He says, the words of the Torah can be splintered into many, many different directions. You can have many Midrashim, but I am here only to say the literal explanation. I just came to say the literal explanation. And now we hear Rashi says, I just give pshat, which is ironic because a lot of times we think it's drash. So do you know what the difference between pshat and drash is, between pshat and midrash? So some have said that the difference is that when I say it, it's pshat, and when you say it, it's drash. Okay, we'll stop the recording here. Okay. Shkoyach. Shkoyach. Shkoyach.